Praise the Lord. You reach Pastor Priscilla Harden for Word and Worship Ministries. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your holiness and your righteousness. We thank you that we can depend on you. You're worthy to be honored, glorified, and praised. There's nothing that you can't do. Nothing that you don't need. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. We're grateful for who you are. The righteous Savior. The Bishop of our Savior. The author and finisher of our faith. The eternal, immortal, invisible, only wise son that shall reign eternally. And who have made provisions through his son Jesus Christ in collaboration with the Holy Spirit. And so we are the Godhead. And all the operations that entail the authority of your king. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of you can depend on God? And always depend on God. Yes. Yes. You can always depend on God. I don't care what you're going through. Yes. Yes. Trust in God. Yes. I can't depend on God. I just can't let that go. I can't depend on God. That's just what I want to deposit in your spirit. You can depend on God. Jesus is great. Yes. Some of you may be going through uncertain times, but you can depend on God always. I can depend on God. 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 Yes. In the rain, I can depend, I can depend, I can depend on God. Yes. Through the storms, through the rain. Through the storms, 
to reign. I can depend on God. Can you do you know you can depend on God? No matter what you're going through, do you really know you can depend on God? There's something about depending on the holy and righteous God. It's just something about depending on God. I can't depend on God. You would come with me to 2 Thessalonians. I just finished up 1 Thessalonians. And I'm going to be coming out of chapter 2. And I'm going to start at the first verse. And it reads as thus. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye may be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you, by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of prediction, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that ye might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now let it will be let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, which all powers and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receiveth not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Bible tells us that we are sanctified through the spirit of truth. And that we have been called out of darkness and to light. God never does anything twice. He gets it right the first time. Everything that God does is right the first time. He's not destroying the world the first time. The same way he did He's doing the second time. He used water the first time. He said fire the second time. He never does anything the same way. Human does. God doesn't. Because human leans upon their own understanding to remember how something was done, that they would try to recreate the same way they did it the first time. And God is a creator. 
So when he does something a second time, he does it differently. He never said. Our incarnation to his people again. It was only done one time. It is only Satan that tries to duplicate what God does the first time, which is perfect, to confuse the saints. The Bible says that we should gather together unto him, the holy and righteous God. Forsake not the assembling together. That's not for people. That's for him. That's not for our agenda. That's for his agenda. That's not for our self-promotion. That's for him. That's for, not for our will. It's for him. For we have been created to have pleasures in him. We're created for his pleasure. As he boasts in the well-pleasing of his people who trust in him. But in 2 Thessalonians, this epistle is being written to remind the people that there's going to be a falling away. And the falling away is going to be from God's standards, his statutes, his trust, and abiding in him. That there's going to be a mystery of iniquity. A mystery of iniquity. And so I'm going to, thank you, Lord, I'm going to entitle this message, A Mystery of Iniquity. A mystery of iniquity. When we think of a mystery, it is something that's difficult or impossible to understand or explain. We will never be able to understand it or explain it except God. Excellent. Except God makes it known. There will be wickedness, unrighteousness, deceivableness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of truth. That they might be saved. God is extending his loving heart to a multitude so that they will be saved. That they will be up under the covenant of him, up under the blood covenant. that his son made provisions for them on the cross. That they may not suffer turmoil, but yet be able to hold on to the promise of a holy and righteous God. That they can refrain thy feet from evil and keep his word, Psalms 119, 101. 
Romans puts it this way. Romans 12. 21. Not to overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 puts it this way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And 2 Peter 3.9 puts it this way. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some people count slackness, but is long suffering toward us and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Revelation 12, 9 through 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. A mystery, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of iniquity. We can just look within the last three years. And reminisce over everything that has been going on. And see that iniquity is running rapidly. Immorality, grossly unfair behavior. Twisted, distorted, bending, mutilating God's statues, his standards, his will and purpose for his creation's life, for his creation purposes, for his creation means. We've lost many, the image of God. The 
Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelations 4, 11. The image of God. has been lost, lost through sin. And when the image is lost, it no longer has the purpose of its creation. We've all been created for a purpose. And Revelation 4.11 says that thy pleasure they are and were created for God's pleasure, for God's glory. But iniquity, the mystery of this iniquity, the injustice, the twisted, the distorted, the deceived, the unrighteousness that perishes and destroyed the image and which humanity was created is permeating through the wickedness being revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with his spirit We see over the three years death more than we've ever seen. Egregious acts, malice, purposeful intent, planned. Lack of self-control through anger rage. Iniquity. Stealing. Scams. Corruption. Iniquity. The exhortation of iniquity upon earth. No longer abiding in his purpose of creation because there's a falling away. The statutes and standards, the morality, they're not abiding within. The image is destroyed. It's destroyed through the iniquity. There's no righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4.24. There's no light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 4, 6. There's no pleasure and guard for their created purpose. Revelation 4, 11. They've changed the order and which God had designed, gave authority to. 
and to their own image and own order. They become uncivilized, uncivilized in their actions, uncivilized in the way they interact with one another. If we study history, we understand that civilization had to have laws so that people would understand their limitations. Otherwise, they would be uncivilized. Everybody doing what they thought was right in their own eyes, in their own sight. Because there were no parameters, no standards, no structure, no statue, statues that would hold them accountable for what they were doing. That's why they thought it was right in their own sight. Because they did not hold on to the standards and statues of God. They did not abide in the wisdom, counsel of God. They lacked. the commandment from God. They lack the fear of God. They lack abiding in the spirit of God. They lack the understanding of God and destroy the image of God. You see, when Adam and Eve was created in the image of God, after his creation in the writings of Genesis, he saw that his creation was good. Everything that God created was good. Because God is good. He's not evil. And the image of God is God's goodness being portrayed upon the earth with his morality, with his statues and standards through his spirit bearing the fruit that it gives. But when the image is lost, it becomes wicked and evil. The mystery of iniquity, the lost image of God in humanity, the lost will of God and purpose of God in humanity, the lost fear of God, in humanity, the lost wisdom of God in humanity, the lost statue and standards and knowledge of God in humanity. It doesn't exist. It was lost through iniquity that can only be restored through divinity. God is a restorer. He's a healer of the mind. He's a healer of the heart. That's why he said, I'll pour my spirit into you and take away your stony heart. A stony heart is the lost image of a holy and righteous God. And what you see permeating the mystery of iniquity 
is hardened hearts. Falling images of God. Creating egregious acts, unrighteousness, Abiding in the spirit of error. Abiding in the darkness. They're deceived. They're unrighteous and they're perishing. Because they have not the love of truth. The image of God is the love of truth. They love not the truth. The image of God is his righteousness and true holiness. The iniquity is strong in delusion. And they will believe a lie. And they will put pleasure and unrighteousness. Because they will believe not the truth. And God will send strong delusions. Verse 11. First, let's go to chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, starting in the ninth verse. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Satan is the father of lies. They believe Satan. They'll have a delusion. An idiosyncratic belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by what is acceptable as reality through the spirit of God, through the knowledge of God, through the understanding of God, through the will of God, through the counsel of God, through the truth from God. that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother and beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you through salvation, through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. See, the image of God loses the sanctification of the spirit of God and also loses the belief of the truth from God. 
So they're in a delusion. The mystery of iniquity. And what you see permeating upon the earth for many years is the mystery of iniquity. A strong delusion. A delusion from the truth of God. Through the wicked one that God allowed. Because you did not want to receive, many did not want to receive the love of the truth that they could be saved. So they believed a lie from Satan that they could not be saved. And there's nothing that God can't do. So they have hardness in their heart that their life has no purpose. That they're just existing with animal instincts to survive. Conquer. Because they don't want to know truth. They want to believe Satan, powers, signs, and lying wonders. They want Satan's unrighteousness. They want it because they wouldn't receive what God wanted to give them. God wanted to give salvation. God wanted to give the love of the truth so that they might be saved. But they didn't want to receive it. So God sent them strong delusions. See, the first way Christ came, he's not coming again the second way. He never does the same thing the same way because he's perfect with what he does. So he doesn't have to do it a second way to get it right. And so as Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, talks about the second coming of Christ. He's preparing his people to let them know that a strong delusion will permeate the earth, the mystery of iniquity. That's going to exist until God takes it out of the way. In other words, what am I saying? What you see are carrying in this world can only be removed by God, can only stop through God. In other words, if God does not do it, it cannot, shall not, will not be done. Delusions of the deceiver. Many would despise the word of God. They won't want truth. They don't want the love of truth. They don't want the image of God. They don't want his righteousness his true holiness, they don't want his knowledge. And their desire, a lie. So they'll be deceived into unrighteousness.
and there have pleasure in their unrighteousness. See, the paradox, spiritual paradox is that God created them for his pleasure. But they want pleasure and unrighteousness. God is righteousness. God created them to justify them, make them righteous and holy before him. But they won't receive the love of the truth. God created them in his image so that they will know the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But they won't seek Jesus Christ. They won't seek the light. They'll think there are many ways to get to the Father. They'll think there are many, many ways. They'll believe Satan, who has powers and signs and lying wonders. And God will allow a strong delusion to come. Since that's what you want. And you'll believe the lie. Because you won't have the spirit of God in you. The love of his truth. That will discern. Between what is of God. And what is not of God. That can only be revealed to you. Through God. An idiosyncratic belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by what is acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God. But the saints who have the spirit of God, the love of the truth, the image of God, his righteousness and holiness, true holiness, his knowledge of his glory, and the pleasure, God's pleasure, and which we were created for. Will be chosen. Unto salvation. Through sanctification of the spirit. And belief of the truth. That's why the Holy Spirit is so necessary. That's why it's so necessary. Because the Holy Spirit teaches. It gives understanding. It gives the knowledge of who God is. It gives the discernment of what is acceptable and unacceptable. So that you won't be consumed through iniquity that will permeate prior to the second coming of Christ Jesus. We don't know when he's going to return, but he said there'll be much falling away and many are going to be deceived because they would have left God. They would have forsaken him because they don't want the truth. They don't want his love. They don't want his heart. They don't want to be his pleasure. They want their unrighteous pleasure. So they will enjoy the wickedness that they do. They will enjoy the unrighteousness. They will enjoy the ungodliness. But the spirit of truth will convict you when you're doing ungodliness. The spirit of truth will convict you 
when you're doing unrighteousness. The spirit of truth will convict you. And can keep you and present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy because it's not your power that keeps you. It's the spirit of the Holy Spirit in which he sealed you with. The excellency of the power that's within him that can stop you from the strong delusion, that can stop you from being entangled, remaining entangled in the power, signs, and wonders of the lying spirit of your adversary, the father of lies. So even if you become entangled, there's something that God has deposited within those believers who are truly saved that will awaken within them and let them know something's not right. I, I, I don't know what it is, but something's not right. So you will see the spirit of truth and he'll reveal it to you. There'll be an unction within you. There'll be an uneasiness within you, an unsettledness that something's not right. And you will seek the face of God for the knowledge of God to know truth. And that's how he can pull you out of strongholds. That's how he can pull you out of stumbling blocks. That's how he can pull you out of entanglements so that you will know truth. Because they're going to be a mystery of iniquity that's going to have its rule over this world. It's going to work its work. And the Bible says already doing its work. It's deceiving some of the saints. So they're falling away. Because they don't want to receive what God has freely given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whosoever believeth in him could not perish but have eternal life. But they are perishing with all deceivableness of unrighteousness because they would not receive the love of truth that he gave his son to forgive you of your unrighteousness, your sins. They don't see their actions as sins unto God. So they have pleasure and what they do because they don't see what they do is not pleasurable in God's sight. They don't see what they do is unrighteousness in God's sight. They don't see that they lost the image of God, the heart of God, the knowledge of God. And they're deluded. They're deceived. They lack godly wisdom. They have no fear of God. And that their hands are now workers of iniquity for Satan. That's why they pleasure in their unrighteousness. That's why they pleasure in the powers and signs and lying spirit of Satan. And they perish. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of who God is. Lack of knowledge of the love of his truth. And they'll believe a lie. And this mystery shall come. It's permeating. Upon the earth. And it will. 
is working upon the earth, a working spirit of air, of delusion that God allowed because he can control all things. And although he allowed it, all the believers don't have to become entangled in it because he's given them power, the Holy Spirit, to teach them the difference between the delusion and the spirit of truth for those who want to know. And that's why many will be troubled. He said, you could be troubled on every side because of this mystery of iniquity. It's going to come. But yet, know this, you're not going to be in distress. You can be perplexed over this mystery of iniquity. The strong delusions that's raging through the earth. But you're not going to be in despair. You can even be persecuted for the love of the truth, the spirit of truth, because the excellency is the power of God that's in you and not of yourself. But you won't be forsaken because his power is in you. That's what makes these treasures. The vessel treasure because hidden treasures are in these earthly vessels. The power of his excellency, his royalty, his majesty, his sovereignty, his lordship, his kingship. You can even be cast down, but you will not be destroyed. Because ruler and spiritual wickedness in high places will be permeated with a spirit of delusion, of air, of lies, signs, and wonders. But you won't be destroyed because the treasure and these earthly vessels, that is the excellence of the power that's of God. So the spirit will warn you. It will reveal it will pull you away from the delusion, from the lying wonders, from the powers and signs of Satan that are there to try to imitate God. That's why he says the very elite could be deceived. If they are not cautious to depend it upon, leaning upon God. I believe it's in Matthew 24, 24. 
For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall grow and and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elite that's what he's talking about you're going to see the signs and wonders and you're going to think they're who they are, but they're not. So Jesus warns that it's going to come. But Jesus has given you power through his Holy Spirit that you don't have to be deceived if you want to hold on to the truth. That's what this is about. That they're going to appear as an angel of light. Deception. Satan appears as an angel of light. Deception. Strong delusion. He's going to have powers and signs and lying wonders. That will not be of God. But for those. Who have the love of truth. That know. That they have the sanctification of the spirit. And belief. In the truth of God. Shall be saved. Because they won't believe the lie. They won't believe the strong delusion that's operating in this mystery of iniquity. That's why we won't have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's why the spirit of pray for us when we don't know what to pray for. That's why the spirit will move within us because we're not going to believe that lie. And that's the warning that God was giving Paul through the Holy Spirit to tell the church at Thessalonica of the falling away. And that's going to have to come first. They're going to leave the truth and honor was not true. They're going to leave my standards and statutes and have pleasure in the things that are not godly wisdom. So he's comforting the saints that when you are enduring this mystery of iniquity, know that I said it would come. Know that I said Satan will have signs and wonders and that there will be a spirit of delusion that I'm going to release because many don't want to receive the spirit of truth. They want to abide in darkness. Damnation. Because I've given them a way out of it. But if you remain abiding in me, you'll overcome evil with good. Don't fall for the deception to do evil. 
Don't fall for the lie to do evil because that's not of me. Don't fall for what some are doing. That's not of me. If you are led by the spirit, then you need to know what the works of the flesh are. Don't fall into adultery. Don't fall into fornication. Don't fall into uncleanness, impurity, lasciviousness. Don't fall into idolatry. Don't fall into witchcraft. Don't fall into hatred. Don't fall into quarrel. Don't fall into immolation, wrath and strife, addictions and heresy, envyings, murdering one another, drunkenness, reviling. Don't fall for that. And many other such things that shall not inherit the kingdom of God because they lost the image of God. That's the work of the flesh. You're going to believe a strong delusion that it's okay and it's not. But the love of the truth, the fruit of the spirit is love. If you love me, keep my commandment. Love one another. Don't overdo evil but overcome evil with good. Abide in me. Let me have my vengeance. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And they that are Christ have crucified flesh with the affections and lusts. So if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. See, many have lost image of God. Many lost the image of God because of sin. That's why they have to be born again to receive the image of God. The image of God is not desiring vain glory. The image of God is not provoking one another. The image of God is not envying one another. That's the lack, the loss, the falling image of God. And so you have the mystery of iniquity permeating, working upon the world. The one that opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Rebellious spirit exalting itself over the knowledge and will of God. That's the mystery of iniquity. And then desiring to be worshiped. Trying to show himself to be God. We're not God. That's a delusion. A strong delusion.
That's the mystery of iniquity that doeth already work upon this world. Until he be taken out of the way. And God's going to take him out of the way. And God will reveal the wicked. And the Lord said he'll consume the wicked with his spirit, his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, the light of the knowledge of the glory of Jesus Christ in his face. Workings of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. His coming is after the working of Satan with power and signs and lying wonders. God is already warning you. Satan has powers. And who this person is coming after? He's coming after in the power of Satan with signs and lying wonders, which will be a strong delusion, a deceivableness of unrighteousness to them that are perishing because they did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. In other words, they are believed from Satan. They are believed that you could be saved by doing what you're doing and staying in the condition that you are. When God does the saving, through the impartation of his Holy Spirit selling you with the treasure that he's returning back for. But many will not receive the salvation because they won't receive what God wanted to give them, his love of truth. He doesn't want them to be deceived. But because their heart is so hard through deception, through lying, through powers and signs that are not true, that they take pleasure in, not knowing, not realizing they're deceived. And these workers of Satan, him who's coming after the working of Satan, which is why we have the mystery of iniquity, God says, don't worry, he's going to destroy. Just hold on to your hope in Christ Jesus. Hold on to your godly counsel. Hold on to your image in which he's created you in. Through his sanctification. Of his spirit. And belief in the truth. the blood of Jesus Christ that restored you to his image. That some don't want to believe. So when you see these things happening, these egregious malice, Outright disrespect for life. Uncivilized acts. That God never approved. They're the works of Satan through his power and signs and lying wonders. Because those didn't want to receive the love of truth and they're perishing 
and their delusion. Damnation, because they believe not the truth and they had pleasure in them. They didn't want to choose. God didn't choose them to salvation because he knew they would never receive the love of the truth. And some fell away. They let the hardness of this world, they let the deceit, the disappointment, misplaced faith, misplaced hope, desiring to be connected with approval, draw them away from the truth. And so they respond out of hurt. They retaliate out of hurt. They treat and kill one another out of vicious hurt that still leaves a void within them because they won't abide in the love of truth. Don't overcome evil with evil, overcome evil with good. So they receive not the help from God because they ask not the help from the Lord. They want to remain in darkness. So he let them stay in what they wanted to remain in. They profess themselves to be wise. They were unthankful. They glorified not God. They became vain in their imaginations, delusions. They were foolish and their heart was dark. They professed themselves to be wise. And they changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible humanity. They lost their image of God, the uncorruptible God. And they became made in a corruptible humanity through the lies, the deceit, Satan. And God gave them up to their heart who dishonored their body because the body is where God put the treasure, the excellency of his power. So you either have his excellency of his power or you have the power of Satan within you. They change the truth of God into a lie. The mystery of iniquity. And they worship and serve the creature more than the creator. And God gave them up. And they were filled with all unrighteousness and wickedness and covetousness and maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, 
disobedience without understanding, covenant breakers without the mind of Christ. are falling away, some knew, but they chose to fall away. Such things are worthy of death, damnation. And they have pleasure in them that do them. This ties right back to even Romans. God here. So they have no excuse. They're without excuse. Because God can reveal to you all things. But you decided abide within a strong delusion. You decided to believe and allow those imagination to exalt itself. Those vain imaginations exalt itself. And it was darkened in the heart. The light didn't shine. In your heart with the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 4, 6. That's what God is saying. But God said he'll destroy with his brightness of his coming and the spirit of his mouth, the sword of his spirit. He said he's destroyed and he gave in us the ability to withstand it. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God operating and the power, the spirit of truth. Because Satan is going to be using the word of God. He's going to be lying about the word of God. He's going to be lying about God. He's the father of lies. He's going to be operating and lying wonders and signs that are not of God. That's why they're going to be a delusion. And many are going to believe a lie. Like Eve believed a lie in the Garden of Eden. There's a spirit penetrating there. This earth, the mystery of iniquity, well, many are believing a lie. Satan lies. They're believing wrong powers, wrong signs and wonders. It's a delusion. 
delusion. It's not the truth. It's not the spirit of truth. It's not the love of the truth. You believe in a lie. It's not the love of God. Not the heart of God. It's not the will of God. It's not the way of God. It's not the statue of God. It's not the moral of God. It's not the goodness of God. It's not the purpose of God. It's not honorable unto God. It's not the righteousness of God. It's not the holiness of God. That's why he said true holiness. Satan will make you think that that's holy. That's not the true holiness of God. And so they'll have pleasure in unrighteousness because they won't have the righteousness of God, nor the true holiness of God, nor the light and knowledge. They'll be darkened. Their hearts are darkened. That's why God said, here come and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the light, with his light shining forth, the truth. And many are going to fall away because they desire to believe it. They wanted to. They didn't want to accept. They didn't want to receive. They didn't want to receive. If you ask, you shall receive. They didn't want to receive. They had the opportunity to receive. He said it again in John. He came into his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. They didn't want to receive him. He came. They didn't want to receive. They still don't want to receive. Even after he went to the cross. To show them his love of truth. That he can forgive. That you must be born again that you must be created through him, his spirit that he deposited within you and righteousness and true holiness in the light of the knowledge of the glory of God so that you will be his pleasure and which you were created after his image. But they don't want to receive him. They rather receive From Satan. From the one who's coming. Is after the working. They want to believe the working of Satan. Over the power of God. The truth of his spirit. Because your heart is not right before God. That's why he said you got to love him with all your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. Love the Lord God with all your mind, body, and soul, and heart. The love of his truth. And we don't want to love him fully. We'll put somebody else on his throne. We'll put something else on his throne. We'll love pleasures, unrighteous pleasures, more than the love of God.
Matthew 22, 37, put it this way. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love the Lord God with everything. You have to love him above all. He commissioned that in Mark 12.30 and Luke 10.27. And the problem is, we're not loving God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and our soul. So that he, when we're weak, we're strong in him. And he said he would do it. Our strength is made perfect in him. Doing our weakness. When you're trying to live for God and the best way that you know how, during your weakest moment, he's made strong in you. He's made strong in you during your weakest moment. His strength is permeated in you during your weakest moment. His strength makes perfect in you during your weakest time that you're trying to deal with God. And many times we won't let God have it. We won't love him above all. We'll keep putting somebody over God. And God said, strong delusions are going to come. We're in the state of a mystery of iniquity. That's why all this stuff is going on. Strong delusions. The working of Satan. And we won't call it what it is. We won't accept what it is. And we won't go to the throne of God and do what God has instructed his believers to do. Satan is lying on God. He's telling you things that are acceptable that God said they never were acceptable and they never will be acceptable. And you'll believe a lie over the truth. That's the mystery of iniquity. That's the darkness of your heart. That's the lack of understanding in which you perish. God said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. He's your strength. It's made perfect in your weakness. That's why he said, love me with all your mind, heart, body, and soul. With all your strength. Love me. And during your periods of time, when you're going through things, and you don't know, and you're seeking me, trying, 
to stay under my covering, to stay within my will, to stay within my purpose, to know truth. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's the excellency of my power in you, my spirit. Not by might and not by your power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The flesh can't do it. The flesh won't understand it. The flesh don't know it. The cardinal mind can't receive it. That's why the world can't receive it. They don't believe it exists. But to those who want to receive, he said, I gave. And he said, they received not the love of the truth. They believed the working of Satan, not the love of the truth. So they were deceived unto unrighteousness. And so God allowed, he sent a strong delusion for those who want to believe a lie. They shall believe a lie. He said they're going to perish. He said that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They're damned because they won't believe the truth and they have pleasures in unrighteousness. Be careful what you take pleasures in. Be careful what you take pleasures in. The mystery of iniquity. Be careful what you take pleasure in because we were created for his pleasure and some are taking pleasures that are not his. They're believing the working of Satan. They're believing the lies. And God is allowing them to go into the strong delusion. Because when he tried to tell them truth, they didn't want to receive it. So he said, there'll be no excuse. Because some of you, you knew God. And you glorified him not as God. Neither were you thankful. You were vain in your own imaginations. You exalted yourself above God. You were foolish in the darkness of your heart. You were professing yourself to be wise. And you changed the glory of the uncorruptible God and to an image made like corruptible humanity. You change the image of God into what is less of the will, the purpose, the created order of God. You did it with your imaginations. You did it with your desires. You did it with your wants. You did it with your flesh. You did it with your will. And so God let you have it, what you wanted. Because what God wanted you to receive, you rejected. Be careful what you take pleasures in. Because some of it is dishonoring God. It's unrighteousness. And so you're being filled with unrighteousness, backbiters, proud, boasters. 
without understanding, covenant breakers. You're not even natural in your affection, not for God and not for others. You're full of envy. Murderous. Deceit. He's saying it. God is saying it. And you're taking pleasures in the wrong things. Pleasures in unrighteousness. You'll do it and justify it. You will say it and glorify it. You will stir up strife and magnify it. You will lie on God and glorify it. Unrighteousness, because your working is of Satan. And you're going to perish. Because you would not receive the love of the truth that you could be saved. You didn't want him. You wanted it your way. But he's going to come, his second coming. And for those who hold on to the faith, who holds on to the truth, who will not believe the lie from the father of lies, who will not take the strong delusion that God allowed to be released upon the earth. Because he know who he deposited his spirit within, the treasures in these earthly vessels. He knows who will receive him and who won't. He knows who did and will fall away. They'll fall away from his standards. They'll fall away from his knowledge. They'll fall away from who he created them to be in his image. His instruction, his truth, they won't abide in him. They won't love him with all their heart, mind, body, and soul, and strength. So that when they are not strong enough, his grace is sufficient for them. They will be made strong through his power, through his spirit, in their weakest moments. He'll keep them. But some of you want to be kept by the hands of the adversary. Some of you want to be kept in the mind of the adversary. Some of you want to be kept in the ways of the adversary. And have pleasure in unrighteousness. Have pleasure in wickedness. Have pleasures in backbiting, lying, covetousness, haters, boasters, proud, despitefers, disobedient unto God, and inventors. That's what God says. Cast down all imagination that exalts itself over the will of God. And the Bible says that it's the working of Satan with powers and signs and lying wonders. That some of this imagination has been exalted over the will of God over the will and power of God. That's why he says our weapon of warfare is not caught, but mighty through God. That's how some of you could get in stuff with carnality and get boasted because you're thinking in the cardinal way, but not the spiritual way. So you lack understanding. You lack the knowledge of what God is saying. <laughs> and because you get boastful God don't tell you because he said you got to keep 
a humbleness of mind. Second Corinthians 10, four. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought, even your thought, you got to be careful about to the obedience of God. Even your thought. Even your thought. Even your thoughts. And when he says cardinal, he's talking about the flesh. You can't do anything to please God in the flesh. In fact, the flesh is not the image of God. The image of God is through his spirit. Because flesh, we are all been born into sin because of the fall. So flesh can never satisfy God, only through his spirit. That's why he departed his Holy Spirit to those. The mystery of the iniquity. Whose pleasure? Whose pleasure are you in? Whose pleasures? Are you in the unrighteousness, the pleasures of unrighteousness? Are you in the pleasure and which God created you for? His pleasure. That's why Satan has some people in unrighteousness pleasure, but not in the pleasure of God for which they were created. That's why he said the imagination. Your strong Delusions, the entanglement and entrapment. Oh, how I love and bless the holy name of God. My Lord, another revelation from God about the deceitfulness of Satan. He opposes and exalted himself above all of God. And there's only one above all, God. That's why he said many will fall away. He calls it a falling away. Just look at what has happened. We've fallen away from his standards, his statues. We've fallen away from his true holiness. Satan making you think that's holiness. That's not holiness. That's why God said true holiness is his image. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's why you will exalt things that God never exalted. That's why you will boast about things that's not to be boasted about. That's Satan, his working, your lack of knowledge and understanding. Oh, my Lord. My Lord, that's why you won't trust him. You'll trust in the things of this world that people are boasting about. A lie from Satan. You won't abide in him. You abide in Satan's purpose, Satan's will. 
and you'll have a strong delusion. And be damned because you believe not the truth, but you had pleasure in unrighteousness. You didn't believe the love of, of the love of the truth. You didn't want to receive it. And he's only going to give it to who wants to receive it. He's only going to give the light of the knowledge of who he is through the face of Jesus Christ for those who want to receive him. And some want to fall away from the truth. They knew truth, but chose to fall away because they wanted to exalt themselves and others over God. The same thing that Satan did. That's why it's the working of Satan. When you want to exalt yourself over the will, the knowledge, the wants, the desire, the heart, the mind, the knowledge, the wisdom, the purpose, the power of God. There's only one God who's above all. My Lord. How could we not know? He's above all. He's above all. But we'll change the image of God and place others above him. That's corruptible. That's what sin is. When you put others above God, that's corruptible. That's a sin. And we want to not hear what sin is. You can't receive the love of the truth. If you don't receive the knowledge of what sin is. That's why he died. Not just to conquer death, but to forgive you of your sins for being held captive through the workings of Satan. And you don't want to receive the truth. That's why he said, some's going to be damned. They're going to have the strong delusions because they don't want to. And they want to have pleasure in what they're doing. Unrighteousness, which is not the image of God. He called it unrighteous pleasures. Now that's God. Now who can come up against God? Righteously, none, not one. Lord, I thank you. Ooh, I thank you, God. See, you exalt yourself. When you try to tell God what you want. When you don't even know what to want. You don't even know what to ask for. That's why you have to go to God. So the spirit can intercede on your behalf and tell you what to ask for. Tell you. He, that's why God doesn't give you everything you want. Because some of you want stuff that's going to destroy you. You're going to be in the mystery of iniquity. You're going to be in pleasures of unrighteousness. You're going to be in the spirit of a strong delusion. You're going to be in the darkness of the knowledge of God. 
and you're going to perish. Thus says the Lord. Oh, I love God. I love his word. I love his knowledge. I love his spirit. I love his revelation. I love his heart. I love his purpose. I love his will. I love his knowledge. I love his truth. And I accept whatever he wants. Because he's God. And he knows more than humanity and even more than Satan. He said, when he returns the second time, and I'm closing this out, he says, and then shall the wicked be revealed. Some of you can't see the wicked, just like you can't see his spirit, God's spirit, because you don't believe it exists. You can't see the wicked because you don't believe it exists. He said he's going to reveal the wicked whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his power and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. There goes to phone. He said that some won't receive the spirit. They cannot receive the spirit of truth because they see of him not. They can't receive the spirit of error because they don't see him either. Neither know of him. They don't know him either. But we know him for he dwelleth in us. And some of the spirit of error is dwelling in some of the people that fell away from God because they fell away from error. They didn't want truth. They turned the truth into a lie. They believed the lie. And so they got the lie. Because that's what they wanted. They don't want truth. And when you don't want truth, you don't receive truth. I guess God took care of that. I guess he took care of that. Let us go to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord. For he's holy and righteous. He's pure and true. And I'm so grateful that when he returns, he's coming back with all purpose and power in his hands. Let us pray the holy and righteous one that he is. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, thank you for your revelation that you continue to teach on the spiritual warfare of the adversary. You continue to make his secrets known that you've known from the very creation that you have been trying to reveal to your people, but they don't want to receive the love of truth. They don't want the spirit of truth. And so I thank you, God. Satan is not playing. He's serious about the damage. He's intentionally doing. And many are playing with Satan. They're playing with his power. They're playing with his lying wonders. And they're playing with his son. <clears throat> And God said, if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But some of you want to play with him. And then you want to enter into unrighteousness, pleasure, the wickedness, his work. 
And so God is allowing us delusion, a strong delusion, God said, to permeate over this world. Because many didn't receive the spirit of truth. They didn't receive the love of his truth. They don't want to be made in his image. They want to create their own image. They don't want to abide in his will. They want to abide in their own will. They don't want him to be often finishes of their faith. They want to write and determine their own will. And then have the audacity to have imagination above the knowledge and will of God. When God said, you got to cast them things down. Because the flesh puffs up. God's spirit down. That's why he called it backbiters, boasters, pride, self-seekers, foolish knowledge, foolish wisdom, the darkness of the heart, traitors, covenant breakers, unnatural in their ways. But he said, I'm going to come and take care of you. I'm going to reveal the wickedness that some has accepted and fallen away to believing it's true. I thank you, God. I thank you for your revelation. I thank you for your revealing. I thank you for making known the mystery of the iniquity that is upon this world. Murders, haters of God. That's why it's so much going on that's not according to your will and purpose. The work is of Satan. The work is of flesh. Disobedience. Darkness. Of heart. But you have the light. And your brightness is coming. And you're going to make all things known. And we thank you for being holy and righteous and pure and true. We thank you for being a keeper. We thank you for being a covenant giver. We thank you for the new birth that puts us in the image of who you are. We thank you, God, for desiring to want to be used for your pleasures, which is righteous. For we've been created. All things were created for your pleasure. But the wickedness wants to take your pleasure and use it for their pleasure. The workings of Satan, the unrighteousness. We thank you, God, for you say the flesh does those things, lie, cheat, all things. And such. But the spirit doesn't. So there be no excuse. Because you made it known. Either we want the truth or we don't. 
and we'll change the truth into a lie to satisfy what we want. The father of lies. And you will allow the strong delusion to allow it to happen because you know they don't want to receive you. They want to believe the lie. They want to believe Satan's power. They want to believe Satan's sign. And they have pleasure in his unrighteousness. And so to those who want to receive, you'll give. And to those who don't want to receive, they won't receive. And those who receive, if they want to fall away, they shall. Because you said many will fall away. They will be a great falling away. And that the unrighteous, Satan, will exalt himself. And we're exalting things that God never exalted. We're approving things that God never approved. And God said, you knew. You knew, but you changed my image through your imaginations. You changed it, and there will be no excuse. At my visitation, my second coming, there will be no excuse. No excuse. And so we thank you for your warning. Once again, God, your warning, your second coming. But you told us, don't, don't count what is going on strange. I said it would happen. Did I not tell you that these things would happen? But I told you, I've given you my comforter. I've given you peace that the world can't give you because this iniquity is coming. I've given you my joy that the world can't give you because the iniquity, the workings, is here. And only I can change it. Only I can stop it. Only I can eradicate it. And I said I would. I just never told you when I'm returning. But I told you to hold on what is true, to abide in me and I will abide in you. And whatever you need, whatever you want, you come to me. And I, the God of peace, which passes all understanding, cast your cares upon me. And I, will give you the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding that you need. Because many are going to perish because of lack of knowledge. They'll believe a lie. And they will have pleasures in the unrighteousness. And so I thank you, God, for the warning. I thank you, God, for the prophecy. I thank you, God, for the revelation. I thank you, God, for the vision. In Jesus' name, I pray and give you the glory. Amen. The mystery of iniquity. Whose pleasures are you abiding in? Unrighteousness pleasures or the pleasure of your creator? You can't abide in both. Either you're going to love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your strength, or you're not.
So it is his strength that will keep you. The power of his excellency in these earthly treasures. Not your power. You don't even have no power. It's the spirit of God. Satan don't have the power. It's an illusion. Delusion. Something that you think is correct, but not in the knowledge of God. And so you'll believe what God never said. You will do what God never said to do. You would accept what God never said to accept. You will bow before what God never said to bow before. You will change the image of God into corruption. The creator image into the creature that's corruptible. unrighteousness and true holiness. And then you will lie on God. Because you don't have the knowledge of God. And can't see what God is doing because you don't have the spiritual eyesight. You're still maintaining in carnality. And the cardinal mind is that enmity with God because the spiritual things can only be discerned through his spirit. I thank God for his word through his Holy Spirit, through his Holy Spirit, because that's who God is, Spirit. And if we're gonna live for God, we have to live through his Spirit. That way we won't be deceived. We won't believe a lie. And the spirit will reveal the truth to you. The mystery of iniquity. Look at the world. What's going on? The mystery of iniquity. God said it would come. He said he would allow it. And that there would be falling away. He said it would happen. What are some falling away from? The truth of God. The knowledge of God. Amen. Amen.